Hi hey guys, uh, Pastor Joel here, and this is the first uh, youth group uh, YouTube video. And so what this is hopefully going to look like um, is that I'm going to go through a little bit, just talk, um, share with you a little bit what's been on my heart and my mind the last uh, couple days. And uh, this is also an opportunity for you. Uh, so something I'm thinking about with this is maybe you guys have something that you specifically want to talk about. And so that would be something you could um, text me or even comment below in the video or, or anything. Uh, just get what you want to talk about and we can do some discussion on that. I can look up, do some research, and we can talk about that. Because right now we, we all have a little bit of time <laughs> on our hands. And so um, it's kind of an odd odd place to be in, isn't it? It's, uh, I've been thinking just this is just... Odd. I don't know if it's odd the right word. It's just different. Not what I expected. It's just something that came out. And, I, and I'm sure that you guys are wrestling with certain things and maybe asking questions and looking for answers. And maybe you're just enjoying the time not in school, which I honestly am not going to lie. I'm not I'm not missing driving school bus a couple mornings. So, but uh, not that I had bad kids. I just had good kids. But early mornings. I saw them. Um, Anxiety has been something that I have been on my mind because it seems like the world is full of, right now, anxiety and fear. Like, you can't not watch the news. You can't not scroll through Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. And it's everyone is talking about what is going on, right? It's just what is happening in the news. And it's being overwhelming on the news. And it's the only thing that people are talking about. And if you go to the stores, you see different weird things. And people aren't letting you in your house. And you're supposed to stay home because of this terrible thing. That it, yeah. well, first, I want to encourage you guys that don't panic, don't be afraid, and don't be anxious. Now you're thinking and you're almost chuckling because you're like, oh, everyone's told me that. Yeah, and I am gonna, we're gonna talk about that tonight a little bit too, just because, well, we, we should be. Uh, we, we do serve a God who is uh, mighty, who is powerful, who is absolutely in, contr is in control and is not surprised by what's going on. And so, uh, <laughs> Let's the, the passage that I came that I thought about is from Matthew chapter six, and it says, uh, "Therefore I tell you, and this is Jesus speaking, uh, do not be anxious about your life, what you'll eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing?" Uh, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need all of them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Uh, that was Matthew six twenty five through thirty three. Uh, you, you've probably heard the last verse a lot, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to. Yeah, it's at the end of this passage, <laughs> and this is really a passage that has a lot to do with the kingdom of God. And I think it also has a lot to do with anxiety and fear. Uh, it has also a lot to do with identity, and, and hopefully, what I'm going to eventually at the end of this passage, I want to take a crack at answering a question that you guys have asked of me before and I probably have not answered very well but but how do I know God's will how do I know God's plan how do I know what God wants for me and, and it's a question I think a lot of almost I mean everyone wrestles with it at some point uh, but you guys are, are at the age where you're beginning to wrestle with things like this and you're beginning to ask questions and it's not it's not a bad thing it's a good thing you're at that's just what you do you are seeking what's next. That's perfectly fine. That's what you should be doing. But don't be afraid of asking those questions. Uh, and don't feel like you are having a faith doubt or things that are bad. These are just questions that you ask because you're at the age where transitions are happening. 
uh, you're going to see a lot of change. That's just part of it. Change has become kind of a normal. And then when we get older and we become adults, change becomes a little more scary because we kind of get into um, a little bit of a funk. So it says right away, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you will eat, what you'll drink, nor your body, or what you put on. Well, it's easy to say, Joel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, the Bible says it over and over and over again because I think this is something that we just we just wrestle with. This is something that God knows we're going to wrestle with. And so he tells us this over and over again. I mean, this isn't a surprise. God knows what's going on. And we, and we know that God is big. We know that God is in control. But sometimes it feels like the world is spinning out of control. Well, I, I don't know what the world is doing, but I know what God is doing. And, and I have a book before me full of instances where God has been in control in the midst of what seemed like chaos in the world, but he is still in control. And it has always worked out for what he has wanted to do. It doesn't mean it will be necessarily perfect and easy for me. But it does mean that I have a God who is beyond what I understand and who is bigger than what I know. And that is a comfort to me, and hopefully it will be a comfort to you knowing the fact that God is, God is big, and he's, he's your God. He's the God who wants to be known by you and who can be known by you. So that's really the first challenge I have for you guys is uh, you guys have time right now. I know there's going to be school coming. I know that's something that's there. I, I have no doubt that there will be things. But but I remember Christmas break when I was in school. And uh, I, I remember that Christmas break was great. And then after a few days, it gets really boring really quickly. And it always seemed to happen that way, no matter what I, cool thing I got. or And maybe you're traveling. I don't know. But no one's really traveling right now. So you've got time. Uh, don't neglect that time. Don't try to burn it or waste it because you're bored and you need to find something to do this honestly can be a gift I, th I really do think this can be a gift that, that in the time that we're in it can be a gift to find God to seek him to read him it's always the excuse that everyone has is I don't have time to read my Bible well now, now you do <laughs> and so do I and I have more time and so now besides making YouTube videos I'm digging into this and I've never made a YouTube video till uh, two days ago, so this is all new to me too. But uh, what you put on, nor life, nor food. Uh, he, Matthew goes on here to says, "Look at the birds of the air. They don't, they don't sow, they don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't store things up in barns. But yet, you don't, you don't see them starving. You don't see them withering away because God knows what they need and He provides for them. And you're thinking, oh, that's just nature. Oh, that's just the way nature is. Well, yeah, but but who designed nature? Who designed the birds? Who takes care of them? And he, and, he, and here's the, the, the clincher that Jesus says in Matthew. says, aren't you not more of value than birds? Absolutely. God has created you very uniquely. He has created you in the image of himself. That, that is unlike anything else in creation. Humanity is what was created in the image of God. You are special to him. He loves you. He cares about you. He will take care of you. Even in the midst when we look in the news in the world and it seems like, man, this is making me anxious. How do I not be anxious? Well, this is kind of what John said this morning, is we, we trust in the character of God. We, we remember that he is in control, that he is powerful. He's the one who created everything. So that, that begins to, to ease away and give us something to grasp onto. As you're seeing, this is starting to, to really show a little bit of kind of what Owen talked about a couple of weeks ago is um, who, who are we? And when we talk about identity, who are we? Because our identity uh, found in something else outside of God and Jesus and who he says about us leaves us with a, a not 100% solid foundation because at some point the world, something will happen. But God is unchangeable. God is unshakable. And what he says about us is that we are his that we are loved, that we are created specially, that we are created uniquely, we are created in the image of God. And it says he will, we are far more valuable than birds, and so he will continue to take care of us. Now, anxiety is just, it's just, we need to, it's not going to go away and stay away forever. We're going to have to combat. I, I wrestle with anxiety. I do all the time. And so what we do with anxiety is we, we bring it to God and say, God, I know that you're bigger than this, but I am really wrestling with this right now, and I feel afraid and I feel nervous. But I know I continue to say to you, God, that you are in control, 
that you are big, that I am more valuable than birds, <laughs> and that life is more than just food and clothing for the body is what Matthew's getting at. That's what, I tend to, that's what I tend to worry about. I mean, that's what people tend to worry about is how am I going to survive today? Well, is God not that big? And it says, and, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span of life? And that's just true fact. And um, we tend to worry about things. And, and it's not just saying to be completely lax, to completely say, oh, I'll never think about that or I don't worry about that. I mean, it's okay to plan. It's okay to think things through. Uh, but it's not okay to dwell and to, to worry and to fret over things that are, one, out of our control. And, and two, they're out of our control not because we have to be in control, but because we can trust that we serve a God who loves us and is out for our benefit that is in control. Uh, and it says, Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. They're not fretting. They're not running to and fro trying to find petals. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, and that's King Solomon, the richest king in all of Israel, in all of his glory, in all of his kingdom, they were not arrayed like one of these lilies of the valley. Now, that's an incredible statement for Jesus to say. Look at the, I mean, he's really trying to point to Israel's most important, richest person that they ever knew. He's saying that person who in all of his glory and all of his wealth and all of his kingdom and everything that he had was not as beautifully dressed as their lily because God is far abundantly more than King Solomon's wealth will ever be. This is the comparison. It's, it's not the earthly things that matter. It, it's the spiritual things. It's the heavenly things. This passage is ultimately about the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we identify, really need to be about. That's why this time we, we, we can take time to seek the kingdom of heaven. The passage right before this is about laying up your treasures in heaven, not on earth. Because those are the things that last. Uh, and they're not the things that are on this earth. And it's just, if anything, the coronavirus should be a reminder to us that the earth is not our permanent home, that, that heaven is. We long for a place of eternity. We long for a place to be with our God forever. And that will be a wonderfully beautiful, amazing thing someday. Um, but if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, but your heavenly Father knows all that you need. Uh, and this to me is getting back to the identity thing. Um, anxiety for me comes when I have found my life trying to grasp for control outside of what God is doing, or outside of God. I have put my identity in other things, and um, for me, it's, it's sometimes my family. I want my family to be taken care of. I need to take care of them. I need to make sure everything's provided for. I need to make sure that they have everything, that they look like they fit in, and so that, I, that becomes my priority. I want that to be so important, and I, and I strive and strive and strive, and that becomes, and I take pride in that, which isn't bad. It's good to do a good job in life. That's not what I'm saying, but where this becomes a problem is when it becomes who I am. Um, because it's not God. Um, I loved sports in high school, and I know a lot of you do, and you're good sports players, and, and sports is, is awesome. I love to compete. You love to compete. Sports are fantastic. Um, and, and, but sports aren't forever. They, some of you will be able to play college ball, and, and, and that's great, and it's awesome. It's fantastic. But sports isn't who you are. Who are you outside of that? Or, or even clothes, or what you wear is what they really talk about. And here specifically, what are you wearing? I mean, sometimes clothes, fashion is a big thing, and it's nice to look like you fit in. It's nice not to look like a slob. It's nice to, to have nice things. That's not what it's saying to just throw everything away. But it's don't let that say that's who you are. You are the in-style, always person, and I have to be that. You can have the in-style things, but it's not who you are. Who you are is you are a son or daughter of Jesus, that you are found in the likeness of God. That is what is most important. And, and it's not just the, not just trying to sermonize you on getting rid of your personal material things and sports and your trophies. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you, you need this to be important, not because this is bad and God is good. No. God created basketball and, and football and baseball and soccer and all those things and the clothes. I mean, that's great. And 
But don't let that say who you are. Who you are is a Christian. Who you are is a follower of Jesus. And that identity cannot be taken from you. That, that can never be because we serve a God who is beyond that. Uh, his kingdom will last forever. His kingdom will know no ends. That's what makes us who we are because if we you know, don't have the clothes and we don't have the sports and we don't have the awards or we don't have the smarts or we don't have the family or we don't have the money, then what do we have? We feel like we're out of control. Well, that's, that's when God steps in and says, I have you. I'm in control. You were never really in control. It's just an illusion that you've created so that you feel like you're you. But who we are is found in what Jesus says about this. So he says, don't be anxious because, well, in the long run, clothes don't really matter. Sports don't really matter. Money doesn't really matter. It's God that really matters. I mean, you can say, yeah, family does matter in the long run, and it does. But, but don't let it consume you. It's, it's our quest to be in control of our lives. If I can control this and I can control how people like me, then I will be happy. Maybe temporarily but not eternally and not certainly joy-filled as you will be with Jesus. Um, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And this is, this is the key. It says seek first the kingdom of God. And so this is tied to the question a lot of, so what's God's will for my life? What do I do? And um, I, I, We've all wrestled with that. I know I've wrestled with it. I wanted to know. And I think there's really a, f a few reasons why we, we want to know so much. And one of them is we, we want to please God. I think that's a genuine concern, the thing we have. We, we desire to please God. And we think by finding exactly what God wants us to do and walking in that, we will, be, we will please God and we will do a good job and that will be great. And that is an honorable desire. Um, it is an honorable desire, but it, it's... God, it's, it's not about finding the exact thing. We're so s concerned about the specifics and we're so concerned about finding the exact fit and, and we get concerned and it leads us to anxiety. You see where I'm going? Uh, it, it's just slightly off base because it, it's not, it's good to want to please God, but it's also good to be satisfied in God. Uh, there is a reason why God has not explained every detail of our lives to us. Uh, because I think it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these will be added to you. Because uh, that's the, the important thing here, is, is what are you seeking? Um, do you love God? Do you enjoy him? Do you seek him? Are you seeking his kingdom? And are you thankful for his righteousness that saved you? Because those are the things that should be central to our lives. And then the specifics of the plan for God will fall into places we do things. Um, we will ask God, and then we will seek it, and then we will knock. And if the door is open, the door is open. If the door is shut, the door is shut. And, and I know you're thinking, this isn't really this isn't really helping, Joel. This is making me feel more nervous about my life. But in some sense, it's, it's a relief because when we are seeking God with our hearts and we are truly trying to please God and trying to love God and trying to seek just to grow in our likeness of being like Jesus, uh, don't worry so much about the decisions because as we walk, our decisions are naturally going to be more Christ-oriented because we are already seeking Christ. Our identity is already found in Christ. This is why Jesus can't just be a part of our lives. He has to be the entirety of our lives because if he's just a part, then I have to like place, well, hang on, I'll put the rest of my life on hold while I put on my Jesus part, while I seek the plan, then I can go back to the rest of my life. You can't, you can't swip, swip swap these things. Uh, God is God, he is who he is, and he wants to have all of us. And that's not saying I have to be a, uh, have a person who has a list of, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I know. The, the rest of our life can be an expression of worship of who we are when we are completely owned by Christ. Uh, the second thing is uh, the thing that we sometimes want to do when we're trying to find the will of God is one was we, we want to please God, which is good. The second thing is we want to know the, the future. Uh, we just have to know. I, I got to know what's going on. I, I just I wrestle with that, and it's like, oh man, I. It's a control thing, and, and 
we can't we can't know it we, we can't control it we can't plan it out there have been so many instances in my life when I have had a plan and it's okay to have a plan it's okay to have it laid out to have an idea of, uh, of where I want to go and to, to have good thinking things through that's that's fine but but hold to them open-handedly because God may either have another opportunity that has come up or another direction that he leads you or it just may be that way and it's just it's just hard sometimes to know but make plans absolutely plan on them go for them but but if God is leading you another way and you feel that or, or he doesn't open an, a door don't look at it as a failure of planning or a failure of not understanding God it's it's a it's an understanding of maybe I just need to trust God more maybe I need to rely on him more and, and this is part of this whole anxiety thing because when we try to know the future uh, it's it's hard um, Kevin DeYoung I was just reading a book by him he, he defines anxiety as trying to live in the future before it gets here and, and I think that's really good because it's that's exactly what it is. Anxiety is I'm trying to anticipate something and I'm trying to live that future event before it even comes. And not only is that exhausting, it's going to make us anxious and it's going to create fear and it's going to have us want to control things that we can't control. When God just says, seek first his kingdom. Seek first his kingdom. And I'm trying to remember the third one I had. Of course, I didn't write it down. Give me one second. Oh, uh, the third way that sometimes we need to know the will of God, we need to know what's going on in the future, is because we think that if we don't do it, uh, we'll either have a terrible life uh, or God will punish us because I didn't find it, because I didn't seek it right or I didn't seek it correctly, and therefore I'm going to end up with this and this because it's not good. Um, that's not, it's not the God we serve. He's not seeking. He's not underhanded. He's not conniving or deceiving. We serve a God who is good and a God who loves you and who cares about you and went out of his way to save you and to put people in your life who care about you and bring you to a spot where he can uh, grow you. Um, this is not a surprise to God and therefore we don't have to wrestle with this. I mean, if, if we are seeking the kingdom of God first and we are enjoying the, the fellowship and the love and the relationship and the seeking of Jesus, we're not letting anxiety control us even though we will wrestle with anxiety it's just a part of what it is we don't have to fear that god is going to be um retributive i know that's the right word i'm looking for but he's not going to be vengeful <laughs> you didn't do this well you tried and you missed it no that's that's not the god we serve no that, that it's not a reason to to seek the will of god because if i don't find it i'm going to get in trouble no we, we seek god and all this will be added as well so how do I do that? <laughs> um, you remember the story of Gideon and he put a fleece out and he asked God to make it wet and the ground dry and then he said, do it again and do it backwards, make the ground dry and the fleece wet. Uh, they have this thing they call it fleecing God where if we do this, we, we say, if you do this, God, then I'll, I'll know this is the way you want to go. And it says in the Bible to not test God and so don't do that. <laughs> One, I, I just think you'll end up being frustrated because I don't think God responds to those um, fleecings because I think, I mean, okay, maybe in a rare occasion you hear the story, the amazing story about what's going on, but I, I, I don't, it doesn't, it's just going to be frustrating for you in the end. Don't fleece God, don't, don't roll dice, don't, um, <laughs> don't play cards, don't flip a coin, um, don't do random things, don't expect God to do what would happen if we pursued God with our hearts? If we were living our lives day by day, seeking ourselves and who God says he is about us. And, and we want to follow God and we want to try to, to, to seek first the things of the kingdom and, and to, to love God, to find ourselves in the scripture because we do have two guides that God has given us. He's given us one, he's given us the word of God. And you're thinking, well, that doesn't say where I should go to college in there. No, it doesn't. But it does guide your heart and your mind and your life to more orient yourself around God. And that will help you make wise decisions. You don't see the Apostle Paul in the Bible making all these 
ridiculous decisions based on things that he heard. Sometimes God gave him very specific instructions. That may happen in your life, absolutely. But it is not the norm. The, the norm is Paul's like, I'm going to go here because I'm praying for these people and my heart is breaking for these people, so I'm going to go seek them out. Or he's just like, I'm already walking this way, I'm going to keep going. I mean, this is, this is, is who he is. And Paul was shipwrecked twice. And, and he ended up converting people in both these shipwrecks. He survived all of them. It was an incredible story. But Paul lived his life very open-handedly with that. And so it's it's one of those things. And the other thing is, how do we do this? Maybe is to the ask, seek, knock I mentioned earlier. It's We, we ask God, we, we seek God, and then it, we knock on the door. I mean, that's kind of the progression of ask God, and I don't feel like I've got an answer. Maybe because God wants you to start seeking it. Well, I've saw it a little bit, and I still don't feel like it. Maybe I need to to knock and I need to try to push the door open. Well, the door is either going to open or it's not. And then we kind of know that that one doesn't work. We, we certainly know when we are being disobedient to God's will, uh, but sometimes it's hard to know exactly what because we have to press in a little bit. Uh, I really related a lot to like chopping for jeans. You know, like we just know when we put on a pair of jeans that jean that is that's good, but doesn't fit quite right. But you try another pair and you put it on and you go, that's that's it that's the pair and you have no doubt and you're done shopping maybe that's just the way i jean shop but that's just i know when it's on it's right <laughs> and i know when it's not right and sometimes they're in between but then you know once you find the right one that's it and everything else pales because that is the decision i need to go with and then as you pray you feel more and more comfort with that that's 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 part of this so I know we're kind of on a rabbit trail. I'm already uh, longer than I thought I was going to go, so I apologize for that. But if you have questions that you want to talk about next week, you want something I want to dig into, uh, shoot me a text or a comment or find me on Instagram, and you can do that too, uh, and we'll talk about that. Otherwise, I've got some other stuff we can certainly go through along this line. But um, don't worry what's going on. Don't, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Don't be anxious. And I, I know it's not necessarily helpful to just say it. But it is something for us to go through again and again because anxiety drives us back to God. And when we're driven back to God, we realize more and more that we need to be more made in the likeness of God. And that's why I'm so thankful for Jesus seeking me out and saving me. And when we do that and when we follow God and when we seek God and when we live our life for God and we follow Jesus with everything we've got, then the decisions of life tend to fall in. Now, I'm not saying everything is going to be easy and perfect and simple to make. But our wrestling becomes a holy wrestle, and our holy wrestles become moments that shape us and mold us into things that reflect Jesus so much better. And that is our part of our worship to the world, is I have been molded and made by Jesus through my good times, my bad times, and my decisions and my indecisions. And I need to trust God in all of that. This is not just a coronavirus one time. We need to trust God right now more than anything. But this is a, if anything, it should be pointing us back to, this is why we need to continue to go back to Jesus over and over and over again. So, uh, again, shoot me a text, something. Let's hear from you guys. I'll be touching base with you guys too, hopefully too. So, thanks guys. We'll see you guys later.